on Divorce Court Today. Can a couple who love hard and hate hard find a happy balance? Julia complains that Greedy drinks too much and chases other women, while he says she cheats and has a violent temper. Julia Williams and Greedy Willoughby have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court Before Your Vows starts now. Today I have Julia Williams and Cornell Greedy Willoughby <laughs> in the courtroom. You're in love, you're thinking about getting married, but you're not quite sure, so you came here for my opinion. I've got your marriage license, which I can either give back or tear up. I've got your compatibility test. But before we get to any of that, though, Mr. Willoughby, how come they call you greedy? Because <laughs> I got, I had nothing to do with nothing. I just want to know. Well, actually, I got it a long time ago when I was younger. You know, I was into mischief and stuff and kind of running the streets and doing my own thing. And I just wanted it all from money to women to whatever. I you just, just wanted, wanted it everything, all, all everything, of it, every everything. time. Every time. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Everything all the time. I got gotcha. you. Yes, all right, greedy. Yes, That's all right. <laughs> Wait, it's, just, it's nice to be self-aware, though. You knew right. you knew what your situation was, right, so that's right, cool. Right. So you like greedy over there, do you? I love greedy. <laughs> Tell me what you love about him, but why you're not sure you want to marry him. What I love about him is that he keeps me laughing. Mm -hmm. He can be a good support group, I mean, person to come to. Um, the reason why I don't know is because he's still got some childish ways. Give me an example of some childish things that he's done in, in the recent past that causes you concern. I mean, one of the childish things I can say is not being able to keep a job. <laughs> oh, now, now, that's big. That's huge. Can you not keep a gig? Um, I can. To be honest, I haven't found anything that I really, really like. But so it's you not an can excuse. keep a job. You just it, choose not to. He chooses to play when he gets there. Honestly, <laughs> sometimes, yeah, I confess up to that. I should take that more seriously and you know buckle down. That's what I'm doing now. I'm actually. Yeah, you know, because working isn't like it should be satisfying and wonderful. But even if it's not, it still pays. Right. And that's important. And right. until you find satisfying and wonderful, you should still get paid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Even if it's not what you want to do, you should, you should, uh... Yeah, I'm, wor I'm working. I'm ironing that out right now. Right. So, yeah, I'm right. taking it a whole lot more seriously than what okay. I was Okay, okay, good. You say that he won't tell anybody about the two of you. What do you mean by that? I mean, what I mean is that I feel like he keeps me a secret, like... From whom? From... I feel like, okay, his Facebook thing, it took him forever to even put a picture of me on there or put, a, like, something on what we doing about, you know, mm -hmm. anything, everyday life type stuff. You know, even with his family members. Like, it took me a minute to meet his mom. It took me a minute to meet his sister. And me meeting his sister was like, hey, this Julia, this, this, or whatever. And it was never no, like, us sitting down, us, uh, no party, like barbecue, no events like that type stuff. Like, he want to say that he invited me to it, but he invited me to it and then left me. And then, like, when he do want to take me over there, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, you know, and this is after he done been drinking or whatever. And, like, who wants to really do that? No real woman wants to be at 2 o'clock in the morning knocking on somebody's door, like, hey, how y'all doing? Where the party at? No, you know? Right, 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 right. <laughs> and I got you. Mr. Willoughby, is she just your nighttime girlfriend and she's not mm -hmm. your daytime lady? Negative, negative, no. Um, as far as the Facebook thing go, I've never been a big Facebook person. That's just not, that's just not me. Like, I, I post some stuff sometimes, I look on there sometimes. But she right, I didn't post any of our pictures, which I should have, so I could understand her beef with that. But as far as the family thing go, she know as well as I know I've invited her a many a times over to my people's house, and she just declined. She said, no. I've asked her to come over to my mom's house numerous of times. She's like, nah, I'm all right. I was at my sister's house, called her over there, and was like, you want to come in real quick? She's like, no, nah, I'll pass. What time was it? It was late, but my sister works, you know what I'm saying, a mm -hmm. lot. You know what I mean? So on the weekends, she that's her time to let her hair down and do her thing. We go over there. So it might be late when she finally calls me mm -hmm. to come. So then I'm like, babe, come on, let's go. But how am I okay. supposed to Hang know on, Ms. Williams. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we can talk about this a long time. I'm just trying to get a flavor of what's you. happening, <laughs> okay? You. Now, Mr. Willoughby, mm -hmm. you care for her? But you're not sure either. What is your concern with respect to marrying her? Um, well, I mean, I definitely want to marry her and I love her to death, but it's like certain issues that bother me. Um, respect-wise, some things I ask for, it seems like she just 
Give me an example. Can't do. Like, I mean, I actually do a couple of things, you know what I mean? Like, not have, you know, men in the house while I'm there. That's one of my big rules, because... I grew up like that with not, you know, my, my dad not allowing no guys being in the house when he's not there with my mom. Mm-hmm. So that's one of my rules. Um, I know she don't like always to wear, you know, underwear. She always, though, that ain't, you know, that's her thing. Just she put don't her like business all out there. <laughs> but I mean, she do But it's like when you finna go downstairs and there's company, dress entirely for that company. Mm-hmm. And she'll go down, she'll want to keep going anyway. Why do I have to keep reminding you? You know what I mean? Did you should already... put some panties on right. before or you come down the I mean, I you just want to go down there <laughs> just all in the open. And her thing is, can't see nothing. I mean, it don't matter. I mean, it, it's, it's something uh-huh. I'm asking for. And if you respect me enough, why can't you just do it? Why? Every time you gotta, I gotta constantly remind you. And then you don't want to do it. It's not Ms. that Williams, people there. Response? It's not that people there. It's like, what if somebody come or whatever? You know, like my brother might come over and he might bring somebody, but he don't come over like all the time. So yeah. if it's late or whatever, why can't I run downstairs? You know. But do then my thing with the respect thing. No, I, I trust her. It's just that people do come sporadically. Like she's saying, ain't nobody there. When nobody's there, I'm like, free, feel free to do whatever you want to do. It don't bother me. I like it. You know what I mean? I like to see you like that. So I'm straight. But room. my thing <laughs> is, like, if you don't know when your brother coming or going, because he comes any time of the day, any time of the night, he brings people with him. Or if you know you're going to be downstairs and somebody might pop up, which has happened before. We've been downstairs and she's relaxing. I see somebody knock at the door and she got to do a 100 yard dash to mm-hmm. run upstairs to get dressed. And I'm like, why not just start from the beginning, just coming down respectable, and we ain't got to worry about you, that. You, and here's what I'm going to say to that, and it's not directed to you, but in general, mm-hmm. if you have one of those come-and-go households, it's not conducive to a good marriage. You should, mm-hmm. She should be able to be downstairs at 1 o'clock in the morning in whatever state of undress she wants to be in without fear of the neighborhood dropping by. So mm-hmm. if you have a come-and-go household, you're never going to have a stable marriage. Because, you know, my husband's brother can't just drop over at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, I may be, you know, whatever. But they got to respect his household and not just show up whenever. And right. that's, that's a, a sign of respect you need to show her. You, get, you're in a disassembled community. They will right. disassemble your house if you right. let them. But that goes for both our friends, Absolutely. too, right? Because it's not a lot of my friends that's popping Absolutely. up. Absolutely. It goes for her it's, friends, it's too. It's my brother. It's friends. my brother. You know yeah, well, see, yeah. you got to build a fence around whatever <laughs> home you build. You're right. And you, you can't let the street flow in and out whenever it does because it's right. not cool and it won't work. I'm right. just a hey, divorce court. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Next, what does Greedy know about the smashing of car windows in the middle of the night? Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real problems, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Williams, I understand that you have an issue with some of his exes. The groupies. We, the groupies. <laughs> Why don't you tell me a little bit about them and tell me what happened to his car? These groupies just pop up all the time. <laughs> Inbox at my house. <laughs> well, on this one occasion, I just came from looking for a house. I go upstairs and... Um, I'm about to get back in the bed with him, and I just hear, tsh, tsh. I'm like, what is that? You know? So I look out the window, it's like she down there with a hammer and knocking the windows out. So I'm running down the stairs. He, no, 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 she's sick, she's sick, no, no, or oh, whatever. And I'm like, no, forget this. So like, he stopped me from going out there, but like, she busts the windows out and everything. So he would go out there to take the pictures of the car for the insurance people. She come pull up, and she's like, um, what you say I did this or whatever? He like, yeah, you know you did this. We got witnesses. And I'm just sitting there because right then that's not my business, you know? So then when she, like, she looks at me or whatever, she says something like, you supposed to be at your mama's house or whatever. I'm like, no, well, he's been here. Oh, well, who is you? I'm like, well, I'm Julia. Oh, I thought you wasn't messing with her no more or whatever. And then, um... I'm like, no, well, he's been here. We engaged. I got two rings. She looks at the rings. Oh, them my rings or whatever. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh, really? Or whatever the heck. And um, so I um finished cleaning the car off. Him and her tussling or whatever. I go in the house. They're tussling? Yeah, they tussling back and forth. She's trying to get in the car. He pulling her out the car. You know, it, just looking crazy or whatever. So I'm like, what the heck? 
Greedy, what's up with the groupies? Listen, it sound, it sound a whole lot more worse than what it is. First of all, it's not groupies. It was uh, one of my exes from the past that didn't that I've been with for a while that really wasn't trying to let go. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I was still attached and trying to be attached, and I wasn't trying to be attached to her. Mm -hmm. She um she came, she found out where uh, we stayed at. You know what I'm saying? And she, it was messy. And she, yeah, it got real messy. And I mean, I had never brought anything to her doorstep before like that. Nothing mm -hmm. had ever happened. Nobody had ever came to her house except that one isolated incident. She did mm -hmm. come by. She did bust the windows. She was sickly, so I didn't want her to go out there and get in any trouble trying to fight the girl or, right. you know, get in any trouble. Just, she wanted to argue and fight I, with I, me. Yeah, I get it. I, I, you know, yeah. It was just a hot mess. I got, yeah, I got it. Yeah, Who's yeah. sexting? Which one of um, you is sexting? Um, both of us. Well, this is... This is how, okay, Mr. 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 Wilber, you, you tell me the story. story. No, uh -uh. Let me tell you how this went down. <laughs> okay, we often break up, hook back up, break up, hook back up. This is one of the times where we have... Hooking back up. Right. You know, I went over there late night. We was going chilling, you know. Yeah, I, I, know, I, know, I know. I make, know. Make, I know. Make back up. You know, we're going to make back up. You know what I'm saying? So I come in, I come in the house, go upstairs in the room, and um, I'm on my phone, and she's like, let me see your phone. And I'm like, okay, I'm kind of hesitant, but I'm like, okay. So I let her see it, and in there is me um, asking somebody to send me a picture. And I'm like, use your imagination, which probably was wrong, and I admit that, but I say, hold on, let me snatch your phone. So I take her phone, right? Look at her phone. She sent in some dude a picture of herself in nothing but a towel. She told me this guy was her cousin. Then it turned to being her friend. Then it was just a homeboy she knew, but she hadn't met this dude. She hadn't messed with this dude the whole time. She even brought him to the house and introduced me to him. I done shook the man's hand and looked this stupid. You know what I mean? So Ms. it goes back and forth. She been messy too. I, I believe that happened because I see, it, I see the happened, guilt on your face. Happened. It did happen and... I mean, okay, the dude was a friend. He did start off as a friend. And me and, like he said, we break up but, all the time. And so, so you got somewhere to go when you break up, bam. No, but I, me and him mm -hmm. never did anything. But okay. we did talk about it. We yeah, did okay. talk about it or whatever the heck. <laughs> the dude, he do have a girlfriend too or whatever. So we talk yeah, about or whatever. We talk about both or yeah. whatever. Like what yeah, our well, relationship is. Let me digest this and then we're going to talk about your girlfriend for a second. <laughs> When Divorce Court, Before Your Vows, continues, will love conquer violence, exes, and drama? Julia and Greedy say they love hard and hate hard. Do you think that's a solid basis for a marriage? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues. We've been talking a lot about what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to tell me what's right. Why do you think that Ms. Williams is the one woman in the world for you. I'm gonna give you 90 seconds. I mean, sell it hard. Okay. Make me believe. Okay. 90 seconds. Okay. Go. Um, she's beautiful. She's hardworking. She's loving. Um, she handled her business. She's a great mom. She has my back to the fullest. She got me when I'm up. She got me when I'm down. She's like my best friend, you know what I mean? She, I can come to her, laugh with her, cry with her, whatever, you know, and she don't judge me for it. You know what I mean? At the same time, she got a hard will. She's self-motivated, self-driven. I mean, she can do anything she put her mind to. I mean, there's nothing she can't do. That's how I feel. And I mean, I want to be a part of that and I want her to be a part of me. You know what I mean? Ooh, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> oh. And he means it too. Yeah, I'm yeah, he backing it up with feeling over there. Uh oh, Ms. Williams, you got 90 seconds to sell me on your love for this man. Go. I love him because he pushed me to be better, to want to be better. He, I didn't see him, I mean, he is a good man. I didn't see him at his best time. And I love when he's like <laughs> motivated, doing what he's supposed to do and stuff. And I don't feel like I can be without him. And when I'm with him, I feel like I'm at my best. And I feel like he could be, a great father figure, a great man. I feel like we could do so much <laughs> together. And I, I, he spoils me, you know, like for no reason, flowers and cars and candies. 
you know. <laughs> okay, I, I I do know, Ms. <laughs> Williams. I do know, and I had, and I also understand why you're having a difficult time articulating it because it's such a big thing and it's it such is. a grand thing and it fills you up. And I get all of that. And I get all that. I gave you two a compatibility test, but I'm not interested in it anymore because <laughs> I like you too much. <laughs> do, 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 do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you what your problem is. And you said it in your papers. You said it clean and clear in your papers. And you said, in the beginning, we talked a lot about how we behaved, or maybe I should say misbehaved in our past relationships. We talked about our tricks and what we would say to get away with things. And I think we talked too much. Yeah. I think you're afraid of who you used to be. And you're protecting yourself against who the other person used to be. Right. I'm going to tell you how to fix that. And I'm going to tell you what I think is the even bigger problem that you have that I think you can solve. Because I like you people. <laughs> and, I, and, and I want you people to make it. So I'm going to tell you just what to do. <laughs> Judge Lynn Dower's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Your problem is that you're two good people in a bad neighborhood. You live in a disassembled community where people are texting and sexting and coming in and out the house and drinking and carrying on and relationships come and go and people come together. You break up so you sleep with somebody else and you have sex with her and you dip over here and you tip over there. And it's very, very hard to be a married couple in a disassembled community. It's difficult, but you're two good people, but you gotta build the right kind of house. You gotta, you, you gotta have house rules and it's gotta go for everybody. Nobody needs to be over there after 11 o'clock at night. Don't nobody need to be over there, because that's your home. And you have to call it that this is my, my door, my do dudes, women, nothing. They don't need to be over there late and coming in whenever. They got to know, oh, you can't go over to Willoughby House, because they just not having <laughs> anybody over there. You got to call. You got to ask. You've got to share. You've got to be open with you. You know, your phone's back and forth. If, you, if I'm doing anything that I... I would think my husband wouldn't like on the phone. I don't do it. I don't do it. And that's got to be a rule for you. And that's got to be a rule for you. You've got to decide that. And you've got to decide that when you have a problem, you don't trust one another, you don't bust up, you sit down and you speak about it. You don't go, no one else can solve the problems in your household. Only the two of you. You don't go home to mama. <laughs> Cause right. you know right. what I mean. I feel like you you right. don't You're go right. home to mama. You sit down with her. You keep your voice low. You keep cool. No craziness. No drama. I don't want the neck to yank or nothing. <laughs> I just want you to talk to the man. And you gotta have rules about this is our safe spot in our home. And when I come to you here, I want you to come to with an open heart and clean motivations. Cause that's how I'm coming to you. There are so many things that you can do to make your marriage survive the chaos of your neighborhood, but you have to do it specifically. I wrote a book called Making Marriage Work. I'm going to give it to you. It's got rules in it about what you do to construct a union that can withstand the storm of people misbehaving around you. I want you to do that. And the only other thing, I'm just going to say it as I go. You go, oh, marry this woman. <laughs> Take her on. I you am. know what? I'm put I the am. ring on that finger, walk I down am. that aisle, and cry about it, because it's a good I thing. Am. It's a good thing. The only last thing I'm going to say is this. Watch your alcohol intake. Gotcha. A lot of stupid stuff happens on yeah. that river of booze. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Stop backstroking down. Nothing, gotcha. nothing good at the end of that, that river. Gotcha. Nothing good at all. Good luck to both of you. I wish you well. This matter is a game. Julia and Greedy respect the judge's ruling, have addressed the issue of alcohol, and plan to marry. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll-free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.